<clears throat> Good evening. I'd like to call this uh, regular city meeting for the city of San Juan at 6 p.m. May we rise for invocation? Ms. Arjona, can you lead us in the invocation, sir? meeting we ask uh, for your guidance and wisdom we give you the glory for what we accomplish as always in your name we pray amen like for the pledge of allegiance i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all thank you may be seated <coughs> at this time under Public comments. Go ahead, Mr. Hona. Yes, uh, Mayor, Commissioner, good evening, community members, staff. Uh, the first item under presentations uh, today we have a presentation of departmental reports. Tonight we have Department of Planning and Zoning, Department of Parks and Recreation, San Juan Memorial Library, and Department of Sanitation. Everybody's here available. Should you have any questions? If I may. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I would like to begin with Parks and Rec. Mr. Wellingham, first of all, congratulations on that uh, 5K that you all had that <coughs> run. It was great. Thank you. A lot of positive uh, comments coming back from that event. So thank, thank you for that. Uh, second thing was the pictures. I know that you all uh, hire somebody for the team pictures, uh, for the kids' pictures. Apparently, the concern is that they have to prepay for those pictures, and then they don't get them uh, before the season is, is done. Yes, well, this past season we had an issue with them. Okay. They, they've been usually, they've been on time. Okay. This past season there was uh, a division. I don't know, he overlooked it. He's personally made contact with each parent and made sure to <clears throat> deliver their pictures to him. Uh, we've also, in addition to that, have been making contact with them to make sure communication is correct and, and we get it. I don't know why it happened on this time around. We've been using... Um, Mr. Munoz, oh, since I've been here for the last two years, and we hadn't had that, that issue. But this last season, he did overlook a division, and that's where the, the problem was. We okay. have since then corrected it, and, uh, you know, we, we're, we try to fix the problem as quick as possible All right. once it got to our, our attention. And now the other question is on, regarding the teams, the school teams. I know that some schools have more than one team. How do they... Uh, once they have you, they have the registration forms, how do they form those teams? Usually, they do it at the school. The the staff the, at staff. The at key the coach campus. will help okay. out with with dividing the teams. If they don't want any part of it, then we'll do it just as equal as we can. Um, we are. We're trying to better that system to see if we can, you know, how we can get it as equal as possible so not to have a team way stronger than the other team. Um, we do we try to rely on the, the coaches since they know the, the kids. They work with them every day. Uh, we try to rely on them for help. Some want to get involved. Some don't want to get involved. So that's when we have to kind of step in. We don't know the kids, so it's kind of hard to, uh, you know, we try to do our best to have equal amount on each team and, you know, ages, uh, grade levels, you know, so on and so forth. Thank you. Yes. In ref Mr. Willingham, in reference to going back to the teams, like, for instance, the basketball teams, how are you guys coordinating the practices? Because I know that um, uh, some of these coaches are, are kind of, you know. The, the concern on – on the practices is at the schools where we play games. Yeah. So we use that facility for game night. So um, we, that takes them away from, if they're not playing that night, they really don't have a, a place to practice. Since then, we have communicated with the school district. Uh, they've made uh, the old Sorensen gym available. So we're trying to use that one to make up for the lack of gym at the school that is where we're having games that night. So we've, uh, we've gotten permission to use that gym. Great. So we're trying to accommodate as many teams in there as possible to give them equal amount of practice time. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Unham, just to uh, note for you, um, 
on Fridays, Austin Middle School, usually they, they don't have no practice on Fridays. Okay. Uh, see if we can get those coaches to talk to our, either one of the custodians or, or one of the coaches before they leave to leave the, that uh, door open. Any way they'll put down the gate, there's no way they can go anywhere else. Because uh, um, this past Friday I went by and I saw one of your teams out there and it was kind of cool, kind of cold. And um, I was able to get a hold of one of the custodians. So, you know, just try to tell the coaches, to try to meet with Coach Ramos. Yes. To make sure that even though we don't practice, you can still use their facilities. Yes, sir. Thank you. We will yeah. follow up with that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> hey, um Mr. Seen, on your report, uh, as far as the training rooms, no sessions have been booked yet? Nothing? I didn't even send my report before we had the room available. We already moved the GED classes to the training room, and it's available for So it's being, being utilized already, and it's safe. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. It's good news. Any other questions for the directors? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Uh, uh, Soto. Soto, right. Uh, how are we doing with the, uh, with the brush pickup? Are we in time? Or are we catching up? Southeast right now on streets. In south, we're in the alleys. Are we, are we behind or are we on no, schedule? No, we should be in schedule. We should be in the southeast right now. Okay. That's good. And you are having a uh, pickup on Saturdays, correct? As far as the staff that's working Saturday, are we using the same personnel every Saturday? Or are we rotating them? How, how are you doing it? We're using the same personnel. Uh, there's no possibility of rotating? Uh, I'm sure that, yeah, so there might be some staff that, that's interested in, in working on Saturday for that content. So if we can do that. Thank you, sir. Mr. Soto, I noticed that you handed out a, a flyer in reference to uh, Saturday, March 9th. We'll be having a neighborhood uh, cleanup. Is that correct? Okay. If, if we can just make sure we, uh, Mr. Hona, we put this on the. Yes, and as a matter of fact, uh, tomorrow morning. And all that. So tomorrow morning, we're okay. supposed to hand that out to uh, Mr. IT department. Okay. And uh, so that, that it can be placed on the, uh, on the Twitter account and also on the, uh, any social media that we may have. I think it's it's a great effort that uh, initiated. Uh, I want to say by the Keep San Juan Beautiful Board, along with the uh, city uh, sanitation department. Um, there's going to be some sites available that, uh, as, as you know, it's on Dodines Elementary, Fireman Park, the PAJ ISD. There's there's a place that they have on, on East 495, also on San Juan on the San Juan Community Resource Center, on 509 East Darling, which is that uh, community park on the uh, around Nolana or Earling and also on Readmark. So this is gonna be, they're gonna try to do it once a month. So this, this time around, they're gonna use it on the, uh, on the northeast, hopefully to go to the west and then the, on the south side. So there's gonna be uh, people manning this uh, operation, those roll-offs. So uh, it says there's uh, what can be and cannot be dropped off at those locations. So I think it's, it's a great start and it, it'll be something good for the community. And you said uh, you'll be doing this how often? At least once a month, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Soto. Okay, once a month? All right, thank you, Mr. Soto. Thank you, Arjona. Yes. Mr. This is only going to be for a brush only? Brush, uh, uh, brush uh, whatever, trash, whatever. Tires, we're going to get tires them, yeah. I have tire, tires yes. too? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, oh, well, indoor, outdoor okay. furniture, tires, brush. Okay. And it says there what cannot be, that it's not going to be accepted as well. So, uh, I'd like to thank you for what you did today. Uh, I got response from two residents there, 1300, 1304, and uh, actually it was three, and 1310. Thank you for that. Any other questions for the directors? If not, we're going to go ahead and move on. Go ahead, sir. Yes, on the next item, a presentation and recognition of, to Guadalupe Rojas for his dedicated loyalty and commitment to the San Juan Volunteer Fire Department. I know it says 40 years, but I want to say it's uh, 41 years, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir. Yes. Correct. Mr. Chief. Good evening, uh, mayors and commissioners. <clears throat> now, so you can join us in uh, recognizing uh, Mr. Guadalupe Rojas. He's been with the fire department for 40 years. And as a volunteer, he retired. He put in his years of service with the city fire, fire department as a professional firefighter. He's still going strong with us here, still helps us with our daily operations, our calls. Uh, I'd like to give him a round of applause, give him a little uh, something from the city. Uh, if you, on behalf of the 
city uh, for you to sport out. It's a perfect day for it too. So uh, you want to check it out. So if we could take a picture with you. All. Yeah, yeah, take it out. No, it's the worm. Not your favorite color, but. Mickey said extra large. <laughs> Guys, well, thank, you much. Much. I thank you very much. Under public hearings and ordinances, uh, on the first item, consider adoption, which is the uh, in the first reading of the rezoning request, we received a letter from the uh, Quintanilla Hailing Associates asking to take no action because there's not enough uh, information that was submitted. So we can't take no action on this item. And this is uh, under public hearings on A, right? A. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Rona, did you want to have the public hearing and not take action? or Because then we'd have to re-advertise. It's up, up to you guys. I, I, so we'll do the public hearing then? So it's, uh, yeah. At this time under uh, public hearing A, I'd like to open it up at 6.21 p.m. 6.21 p.m. Is there anyone here for or against? For or against? Go ahead, sir. You can come to the podium, sir. State your name for the record, sir, please. Good afternoon, my name is Chuy Ramirez, Good afternoon, uh, Mayor and Commissioners, and I appeared before your Planning and Zoning Commission on, I believe it was on Thursday last week, at which this matter was, was considered, and I objected to the rezoning, and I'll be very, very brief on the reasons for that. The property that is being considered for rezoning is one lot on Alameda Street, on Alameda Street, where you have HEB, and you on the on the on the north side, and you have the uh, pharmacy on the south side. Next to the pharmacy, you have a home that has multifamily uses in the rear, which has been there for God, 40, 50 years or so, and it's pretty dilapidated. Next to that property, east of that, is where you have this lot. This property that's being, uh, whose zone is being requested. That property was subdivided into two lots, a front lot and a, and a rear lot some time back. And it was, re and, the, and the, uh, the front lot facing on Alameda was zoned commercial. I don't know whether it was commercial one, two, or three, uh, but it's, it was commercial. East of that, on both sides of the street, Alameda, all of the uses are single family. And they have been single family since I can remember. 20, 50 years, it's all been single family. 
I don't know why it's been zoned multifamily, but there's no other multifamily use except for my property, which is immediately south of it, in an area that's, that's, uh, that's been developed as multifamily. In my mind, the way you zone an area legally is that you undertake a comprehensive study and you determine long-term how an area should be zoned. Not one lot, not half a lot, but the entire area. I suggest to you that this area, which is zoned multifamily, should be reconsidered. I really believe it should be reconsidered for single family. I think without exception, all of those homes probably have a value in excess of $200,000. There hasn't been a single multifamily building built there in the last 20, 30 years. Now the proposal is to begin dismantling those uses by spot zoning the area commercially. Now, if you want to zone the entire Alameda area commercially, if that's what the plan shows, I would be fine with that. I would be perfectly fine with that because it would be, there would be some rational basis for that zone. But here, it's a real lot, the rear half of a lot, which is currently zoned multifamily. So in my mind, it is not a rational thing to do. And in my mind, legally, someone who wants to spend the money can probably stop that process. I'm not suggesting that I will, but somebody else might. Secondly, and finally, I believe that you can be creative and allow this person the use of her property, the full use of her property, if you divide commercial, the commercial uses into multiple commercial uses. I think you only have two or three. You can have five. Right now, the, the request that she's making would allow for uh, warehousing facilities, for tractor trailers to come in and use it for, uh, for that purpose. That certainly is not the use, a proper use for that area. Unless you have determined that the entire area should be, uh, should be rezoned. And I don't think that the, that the city has done that, that homework. But if it does and it can show that, I would perfectly support that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for or against? For or against? Any questions from the members of the commission? If I may. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Mr. Escobar, I know Mr. Ramirez mentioned spot zoning. Would that be considered spot zoning? Well, uh, directly to the north side, it's already C2. Uh -huh. This is a property to the south. So it's already actually right. uh, commercial on the north side. So this is a continuation so it of wouldn't that property. So be considered spot zoning, yeah. in your opinion. What, what were they planning on building there? Uh, well, technically, the city shouldn't actually discuss exactly what they're going to put. Once they do rezone to that, there's certain uses that can be used in that area. Uh, some of the uh, things that they, they can do are banks, event centers, plazas, shopping centers, hotels, restaurants, bars with a condition use permit. So uh, we can't, you know, say, oh, if, if it's going to be here, then we're going to deny it or approve it. It's just anything in that zone, they can, there's a list of stuff that they can do in that C2. So in your report where you mentioned that you didn't receive any uh, comments in for or against uh, we, from we didn't the have, residents. We, we didn't have any comments, but uh, Mr. Ramirez, he did attend the public right, hearing. That, the, okay, but they, they don't know exactly what's going to be built there until until uh, it's approved. Yeah, and, and they might have an idea, but we can't approve it or deny it based on that. Okay. Uh, because that would be contractual zoning, so which okay. is illegal. So. Any other questions? If not, I'm going to go ahead and close this at 6.27 p.m. So at this time, I don't know, will you take no action? You want to take no action? Okay, at this time we'll go ahead and take no action, sir. The next item under consider adoption of an ordinance in the first reading for the rezoning request from single family residence district to neighborhood commercial district for a property legally described as lot three and four, Capri number two subdivision located at the corner of pooling and FM 495 as requested by Baltasar Alaniz. This is also uh, for zone change from single family residential to neighborhood commercial C1. 
Uh, this is located on Pullen Avenue and 495. Um, there's a map of the location so you guys can see where it's at. It's submitted by Baltazar Alanis. Uh, they did submit the application, paid the fees. We also sent advertisements to the public living within the 200 foot radius. Uh, there's also a zoning map there which shows uh, this is a, a continuous uh, zone change. So it's not we're just changing the zone completely. It, it's already been zoned. Uh, the uh, commercial district on the north side, so the two lots on the south side, they want to change them to that as well. And in this area, you know, the city, uh, it is growing that way. There's a lot of residential, but there's also commercial, so it's, it's somewhat of a mixed use. Um, there's a comprehensive plan that we're working on, which looks at this. Uh, it's not adopted yet, but that's something that we're looking at. So the city is trying to have um, certain mixed use such as that. Um, the type of businesses that are allowed or personal service establishments, TV repair, beauty parlors, dry cleaning, gasoline service stations, drive-in businesses, medical clinics. So it's something that uh, the neighborhood can kind of use commercially, so that's why it's called the Neighborhood uh, Commercial District. Um, this is a public hearing, so uh, if anybody in the public has any comments, they can do that at this time. This time I'm gonna go ahead and open it up at 6.29 p.m. 6.29 p.m., is there anyone here for or against? For or against, go ahead, sir. State your name for the record again, please. Jude Ramirez, and it's only a comment, a general comment, and I would say that it would be very helpful to everyone if we could see a, a map of the area that, that shows the zones, that shows the historical uses, and why there's been a, a change to commercial. That happens, that's perfectly fine, but it seems to me that there should be some evidence that we can rely on to make sure that it's, a, that it's a rational decision that we are being asked to, to take. <coughs> and I don't think we're being provided that information. Certainly as a taxpayer, I, I, I don't see that, right? And, and so in this case, I know that the PNZ voted against that, against the, this request. I have no idea, as, a, as someone who was there, I could not tell why they voted against it. Maybe that was right, maybe that was wrong, but I couldn't find any evidentiary basis for that. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else for or against? Members of the commission? If I may. Go ahead. Oh, wait, oh. hold on. Hello. Good evening. My name is Nitsa Lanis. I'm uh, representing Baltasar Lanis uh, in proposal of the uh, rezoning of lots three and four. Um, for us, I, I mean, I know there is neighborhoods in the back, um, multi-families. Uh, however, I just want you to consider that throughout all that zone, there is multi-families behind all those commercial sites. Um, I know that was one of the considerations that they said last time, um, uh, that they, there was uh, other families, multi-family homes uh, behind those lots. Uh, however, like I said, there, if we go through the whole map, and it would help if we would have a map, um, <coughs> but uh, all of that zone completely in the front on 495, it is uh, commercial right now, so we're just asking for an extension of that, if we may. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else for or against? And, and just for the record, there is a map uh, provided as well. Yeah, in your packet. Yes. <coughs> if I may, ma'am. Go ahead, sir. There is, there is a, a map provided. You are correct on that, Mr. Escobar. But in the past, we've also received the minutes of the PNZ okay. uh, board meetings. And that way we can See read as to yeah, the reasoning why certain members voted okay. against. Um, if, you, if you can, for the next time, if you can include those minutes, okay. that way we know what was why, yeah, why, why okay. they were voting against, the reasoning behind it. OK. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that since you declined one, they declined both of them, or is that had something to do with it? I guess, you know, they might have been similar, but it, you know, that's, they're the ones that voted on it. We recommended to approve both uh, the city, but they denied them. Any other questions? Question. So Go ahead, sir. basically the, the ones that they want to rezone the, are two lots, which makes it a perfect square, correct? The, yeah. Okay. Mayor, 
I would recommend, I don't know if it needs to be in a form of a motion, but to, to table it if we can until we get the minutes. Well, that's of, what I was thinking of, yes, either take no can. action or... or yes. If, and, 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 well, let me close it and then we'll... No, do, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. At this time, let me, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this at 6.33, wait, I'm sorry, 6.33 p.m. Um, going with uh, Commissioner Ramirez's recommendation, I think that'd probably be the best bet or take no action on it for the simple reason that we really need to uh, dissect this issue. Sit. You want to table, table it? it? You yeah, want to table it? Come table? back the next meeting. Second. Okay. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, if you can get, I mean, get with Ms. Arjona or maybe. And, and, and Commissioner Lee. All those in favor say aye. Aye. This item has been tabled. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. The next item, consider adoption of an ordinance in the first reading of the conditional use permit for the sale of alcoholic beverages for the off-premise consumption at the House of Liquor, legally described as Lot 1, Block B, letter Block, subdivision located southwest corner of Business 83 in Iowa Street as requested by Orlando Bocanegra, Jr. Uh, this is a conditional use permit and it's for um, off-premise consumption. This is an existing business, the House of Liquor RR. Uh, there's a new uh, renter, so they have to go through the process to get a new conditional use permit. So that's why we're here. Um, we did submit, submit the application. They did pay the fees. We sent letters to the residents within the 200-foot radius. Uh, there's also photos um, of the site. The conditions that are required is that they have a TVC license. Uh, they get a city a business permit, which is an occupational permit and has to be in good standing. Uh, but basically, they're just coming in because it's a process uh, for the renter. This time, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open this up at 6.34 p.m. Is there anyone here for or against? For or against? Any questions from the uh, members of the commission? If not, I'll go ahead and close this at 6.35 p.m. Is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next item under contraction resolutions, preliminary and final plate approval for the replay of the subdivision. I guess I will bring it at uh, no action on this one. Which one, sir? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Contraction resolutions. This is the same as the... Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Under so eight, we'll right? take no action. Uh, consider authorizing the city manager to enter into interlocal cooperation agreement between the city of San Juan and the Texas Department of Public Safety for general store supplies. Chief. Hey, good evening, Mayor Commission. Uh, evening, this is sir. just a, uh, a request uh, resolution that was asked by the DPS for us to, in order for us to purchase certain items that we need to have a resolution and uh, come before the commission so we can be able to do that. Uh, this is items that specifically they need for a lab. Anytime that we send anything for lab testing, this is the item that we got to purchase it from their from their store. So, okay. is there any questions for Chief Gonzalez? If not, there's is there a motion to approve? I move. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. The next item, consider authorizing city manager to enter into, into inner agreement between the city of San Juan Fire Department and the first responder organization, medical director, provider, affiliation, Medicare, EMS. Chief. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioner. This is just a renewal. We've already had this in place. It expired uh, 2018. So we're just looking to re uh, renew it or ap approval for renewal. How long is the renewal? Two years, sir. Two years? Yes, sir. <clears throat> So in reference to the uh, medical provider, how- That's correct, sir. What that does, it, it enables us to, to open up a little bit more, being under the, the FRO, to get grants and things like that for, for our medical emergency runs and things like that. Okay. Through their medical director. Got gotcha. you. Okay, yes, sir. sir. Any other questions for uh, Mr. Chief Garza? If not, is there a motion to approve? I'll move. Second. There's, there's been a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, sir. Next item, consider adoption of resolution establishing the budget for the fiscal year 32, 2019 of the Hidalgo County Urban County Program. The last time that uh, we brought this before, it was for the, uh, the work plan. Now is the resolution to, to actually approve it. So it's the same information as the last time, but this is the resolution approving it. Okay. At this time, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The next item is considering approval of a resolution approving the city of 
the city's plans of finance pertaining to the contemplated issuance of obligations in one or more series to be designated as City of San Juan, Texas Water Works and Sewer System uh, revenue bonds authorizing the city staff and the city's financial advisor and bond council to proceed with this plan of finance and authorizing other matters related to the foregoing. Let me just go into that section. Contractor resolutions. As, as you know, um, we've been working with the wastewater plant and the uh, lift station on, on rehabbing them. And I'm, I'm proud to present this this evening before you all that uh, we were probably the only city in the valley that received a grant from the Texas Water Development Board out of the $11 million, $420,000 that they were asked as a, as a loan to the Texas Water Development Board. They gave us a grant of $3 million and $60,000. So it's, it's a big accomplishment. I want to thank the financial advisor, our engineer, um, Mr. Hogan and Cruz and Hogan, our finance staff, everybody that uh, took part into this. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know when was the last time that we had a loan forgiveness or type of a grant. I think it's over maybe like five, maybe six years ago. <coughs> but it's a great accomplishment for the city that instead of spending 11 million, it's going to be 9 million. So thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Um, Chris Vela is here to present us on the plan of finance. And uh, Mr. Vela. Sorry, sir. It's been, I'm so excited that we got those $3 million grant, but I forgot your name. Thank you so much. Mayor, members of the City Commission, City staff, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chris Vela with Hilltop Securities, financial advisors to the City of San Juan. I think the City Manager said it best, but um, you should have a presentation in front of you. And um, I, would I would tell you, let's go to page two under the Plan of Finance. The City of San Juan applied to the Water Development Board for financial assistance and received approval on February the 4th of 2019. The city will fund the following projects. The city applied for a total funding in the amount of $9,207,000 under the Clean Water State Revolving Fund, Clean Water State Revolving Fund program to fund the rehabilitation of an existing wastewater treatment plant. Out of the total funding, the Texas Water Development Board granted $2,562,000 of principal forgiveness to the city of San Juan. The city will be financing the remaining difference of a total of $6,645,000. The city also applied for a total funding in the amount of $2,213,000 under the Clean Water SRF, Clean Water State Revolving Fund program to fund the rehabilitation of list stations and force mains. Out of the total funding, the, the Texas Water Development Board granted an additional $498,000 of principal forgiveness to the city of San Juan. The city will be financing the, the remaining difference for a total of $1,715,000. The total forgiveness granted is $3,060,000 out of a total $11,420,000 project, which is equivalent to almost 27% of the total cost. The city will sell 8,360,000 waterworks and sewer system first lien revenue bonds to the Texas Water Development Board for the remainder of the cost. The city will offer a pledge of a first lien on the net revenues of the waterworks and sewer system as sufficient security for the repayment of the bonds. The bonds will be structured with level debt service payments. No utility rate impact or negative debt coverage implications are projected by the issuance. The city will take advantage of the Texas Water Development Board Clean Water State Revolving Fund equivalency subsidy of 1.65%. Moving on to page four, it is basically a recap of the two programs side by side with the project cost for the rehabilitation of the uh, Wastewater treatment plant, the total cost of 9207000 with the loan forgiveness of 2562000 with the total power amount to be financed. The lift station rehabilitation, 2213000 total project cost, 498000 for a total loan of 1715000 The estimated subsidized interest rate at this time is 2.12%. First interest payment, 1120000 First principal payment, 1120000 Final maturity, 49, 
Average annual debt service payments, $295,099 and $76,133. Water and sewer revenue debt service coverage, 1.78. Assumes a BAA rated interest rate less the 165 equivalency subsidy uh, from the water board, subject to change at any time. Additional bonds test is 125. The net revenues over the average annual debt service of the parity bonds, the water and sewer revenue bonds only. Based on the performer calculations in the following slide, the additional bonds test is satisfied. Take you now to page seven, which is the schedule of events. Um, the city commission approves the resolution requesting financial assistance. Um, we came back, we came to the city commission back in September of, um, of 18, around September 17th and asked uh, for the authority to submit the application to the Water Development Board. On February the 4th, the Water Board approved the, the, the application and made the grants. And today, the City Commission reviews the Texas Water Development Board funding program plan of finance. The City Commission directs staff and consultants to move forward with the funding program. On the 22nd of February, deadline to submit draft bond ordinances, legal documents, timetable, distribution list, private placement memorandums, preliminary preliminary numbers, et cetera, to Texas Water Development Board for review. We will be coming back to the City Commission on April the 2nd for final approval of the rates as submitted by the Water Development Board on the actual interest on the bonds themselves. Uh, the City Commission to approve the bonds authorizing the issuance. I'm sorry, on the 2nd we get the pricing, on the 9th we come to the City Commission. And then we will close approximately a month later with proceeds being delivered to the escrow agent as per water board rules on May the 9th. Any questions? Uh, Mr. Vela, under the uh, April 2nd, 2019, on the final interest rates, are those uh, locked in or rates? Once we, once the city, once we get the, the rates from, from the water board and once the city commission approves them they're locked in yes sir by any chance do you know what we're looking at or i would can't say share that right now or what? um well let me let me take you to a slide that maybe can answer help you answer that question first of all we were here on september the 11th of 18 and if you go to page three of the presentation you have the bond buyers index and you can see that the current rate on the bond buyer index is 469. Back in September, when we came to the board, it was 449. That's how much movement we've had since then. So it hasn't been much, but nevertheless, it's been some. So I'm a little leery to project interest rates because I'm not that good. <laughs> I wish I was, but I'm not. But um, let's hope that they hold and, um, and that we get a good pricing. But do remember one thing that we do have that subsidy from the water board of a 165 on that equivalency rate off of any rates. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Vela. That was my question. I don't know if uh, any, uh, anybody else has any questions for Mr. Vela. So, so once this is done and the bonds are sold, when will the money be available for the start of the project? On the first, first 10 days of May, on, my, on May the 9th, uh, let me point back to the, to the timetable on page I may have gone through it real fast. On page seven, closing and delivery of funds to escrow agent on May the 9th. Now, I do believe that um, the bond attorney uh, passed a bond res a, a reimbursement resolution when we submitted the, the application, which gives the city the option and the flexibility of being able to fund costs to promote these projects and being able to reimburse themselves with bond proceeds once the bond proceeds are delivered. So you have that flexibility as well. Any other questions? Okay. Once so again, much. sir, congratulations to the city and to its staff. It took a lot of hard work on on the, on the part of the staff to put this program together. And of course, from the city commission as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. This time, is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? Second. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Vela. The next item under discussion and possible election, uh, we're looking at discussion and possible election to approve the change order to McGuire Iron to include the painting of the north and south elevated storage tanks and authorize the mayor to execute all related documents and the budget amendment is needed. As you recall, at the workshop, we talked about the uh, maybe the possibility of, of a new water, water, water tower. Uh, however, at this point, because of the TCEQ uh, that we're facing, we need to move on this. So this is just so that they can redo them, repaint them, and give us a, I don't know, is it a 10-year warranty, sir? 10-year warranty on, on the paint. Any questions for Mr. Arjona? If not, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next was discussing the possible election to award the 19-01-02-01 uh, uh, to the most responsible bidder in the amount of $18,856.46 and authorize the mayor to execute all related documents and budget amendment as needed. Uh, this one as, as uh, we talked about, this is the uh, municipal valve and equipment, aqua works, pipe and supply, Ferguson, Core, and Maine. These are the four uh, bidders that, uh, that came before. Who's giving the recommendation, Mr. Ramiro? The recommendation on this item is going to. Okay, step recommends approval to award the bid to AquaWorks Pipe and Supply for the purchase of the two 12 inch uh, DI gate valves, the two 12 inch uh, check values, and the four 12 uh, DI spool pieces and appurtenances in the amount of 18856 So this is for AquaWorks Pipe and Supply. That's the recommendation from the staff. Any questions for Mr. Arjona or Mr. Ramiro? No? Actually, uh, this is Trunky basically where you have everything is the same, correct? Just it's a higher bit, uh, higher uh, dollar amounts, but it's the same quality of work? Yes, sir. Everything, yes, everything is okay. the same. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item. Discussion and possible action on regarding the City of San Juan volunteer policy. This is an item that was, that was requested by Commissioner Ramirez, and one of the things that I uh, just want to elaborate on this is that every volunteer that, that comes before the city has, uh, has to go through like any other employee. Uh, they need to fill out the uh, application form, and they go through a background uh, process with the exception of the students. The, uh, the schools are the ones that take care of that. Okay, so then my question was, my, my concern is that apparently in order for students to do volunteer work, volunteer hours, uh, community service hours, whatever you want to call it, uh, they still have to go to the background, to the criminal background check here. Not from us. Not from the city, not from the schools. Well, if it's through the schools, if they're minors, then right. the parent is present. Right. Because normally when we do, when we do process volunteers, they're 18. The only exception that the practice that the city has had for the, the students from school is that they still fill out a volunteer application mm -hmm. and they do go through a, a back, background, right? Not necessarily something that's very extensive. Okay, and they, and they still have to wait uh, whatever amount of time before they do any... any... It, it goes before the city manager for approval. Okay. And we, it's we about try to Okay. We think you, I don't know if you may recall, like the ones that we've had for the recycling center. Right. You know, those were the only groups that really the city would allow when they would have for like the cleanups and things right. like that. And, and that's coming ones. up. I know that, that that was another one of my concerns because that one's coming up. And so I wanted to make sure that everything's in order before we actually go out and. Those are processed through the school. Okay. And we just need to ensure that there's somebody that's supervising. All right. All right. So the background goes through the school, not you guys. Through the school, right, right through the school, yes. So we're not telling them that we don't have a such program or assisting our, our, our kids to uh, volunteer, correct? Right. Okay. Because I think, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, that's what I, I, had, I had been advised, that uh, they were advised that we, we didn't have a program to facilitate uh, volunteers or kids who doing their, their community service work hours from, uh, from their schools. Right. Bear, uh, unless, bear. if they're minors, those are the only ones that we do not necessarily go through the city manager. If okay. I, I think yeah. that's. I think that was kind of the. I think there were minors. But I don't right. Yeah, minor. So. But school programs, they do go. Like I mentioned, like the ones for recycling and for events like that, they do. They do go through the schools. 
So, so what if a judge orders a minor to do some kind of community service hours in the city? Those go through the city manager. Okay. Okay. So they can be placed. Okay. But their parents need to be present. If they're minors, yes. Yes. Correct. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Clarification. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? What's this? Oh, it's just a discussion. Yeah, it's a discussion. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Under consent agenda, we have a couple of items there. Notice that uh, you, you can pull any uh, item out if you'd like to make any discussions or. At this time, is there anything we need to amend or modify under consent agenda? If not, is there a motion to approve? So move. Is there a second, second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Then we go to executive session. The uh, San Juan City Commission will convene an executive session in accordance with the Texas Open Meeting Act, Virgin's Texas Statutes, and Code Annotated Government Code, Chapter 551071. Uh, tonight we have, pursuant to Section 551.087, economic development negotiations, deliberation regarding financial incentives to business project on, on Project Square and the Project D. This time we'll be going into executive session at 6.54 p.m. Is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. We're in executive session at 6.54 p.m. <clears throat> We're back uh, from executive session at 7.22 p.m. Is there a motion to recommit? So moved. There's a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Go ahead, Mr. Yes, under executive session, um, we've got a couple of items, the Project D and the Project Square. It'll be uh, as, as you'd like to, to vote on that. Go ahead. What was it? The financial uh, assistance on the Project Square, and then we have the financial assistance on Project D. We can take it one at a time, or you want to do it at both at the same time. Okay. Both at the same time? Right. Okay. If I, I would like to make a motion, Mayor, if I may. Go ahead, sir. To authorize the city manager to proceed as directed in executive session. Uh, I'll go ahead and second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Is there a motion to adjourn? Just so move. Second. Is there a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 This meeting is adjourned at 723 p.m. Thank you.